prime the motor. There is an adapter in the back side of the motor back One here. One bolt here, and there's two bolts down below. You gotta take those You're off. You're gonna and locate take the bolt that is located right here on the side. It lines with that hole right there. Hi guys, there. so now we are at the front of the motor, and you guys will notice that these two things I told you guys. Proper, these you can bend a cam. Trust me. You will cry. Now we are on the intake portion. Doing the same thing as what you did to the exhaust side. You're just taking it and I'm loosening them. Make sure you pay attention to what pattern you're going into so that you don't accidentally unloosen the other ones. We're back over here now. Okay, and then we have this main bolt up here, which is the last one. And I'm just gonna go around it a few times just to get it loose enough to where we can pull it out with our fingers. And now all of those are pretty much loosened up. There's no tension on the camshaft. Now we finally have access to the camshafts. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the intake exhaust cam. My oil changes were every three to five thousand miles. Usually I do it every three thousand and this is how clean your cams will look if you do maintenance as required. If you are heavier on your car, do the maintenance earlier. It's going to prevent your cams and your phasers from filling. Just keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and remove the exhaust side, we're gonna put these somewhere where they'll be safe. Now the next step is to get all the tappets out of the top of the valve spring. I already did the pleasure of doing the intake side. Now we are jumping to the exhaust side. I just wanted to make sure I added the this type of information in here so that way you don't just start wondering what you're supposed to do with the tappets. Also do not use any tools to get these out because these do have to remain smooth. If you mess up the corners, the edges, or whatever the fact may be, you might as well get new tappets. Now we're gonna go ahead and start taking off the head. And in order to get the bolts, it's gonna be a T55. Now you don't have to go out looking for a T55. You know exactly where they're at. Now we are in the back of the block now. We got all the head bolts removed from the head. All of those are gone. You gotta discard those, throw those away. So now you will see a connector right here that goes to the coolant tube. You're gonna go ahead and push down on that and pull it off. Then you have your main ground wire that goes to your firewall and goes to the back side of the cylinder head. That bolt needs to be removed. That is a 10 millimeter bolt. Make sure you remember where this guy goes because it needs to go back. Do not mess this part up. This is very, very crucial and important to your computer. There's also one more tube that you have to remove before you remove the head, and it's this tube right here. This goes to your coolant flow. So we gotta take it off from here, and we can take it off from the back when we pull her out. All right guys, the only part that we didn't film was taking the cylinder head off, and there's a reason why we didn't film that part. And it's because it's a two-man process. These bolts are actually really, really good on there. So you're gonna need two people to play tug of war, basically. You're gonna just gonna go in a in a pattern to take off all the bolts. There's only ten bolts that you guys gotta remove to get the ordinary to get the head off after you get the cams out and the tappets. Don't forget those. And then go ahead and start taking out your head bolts. Now the next part. We have to clean and sanitize the block. It just means that you want a clean surface so that the gasket has a good seating surface. So you want to get all the gasket material off every single ounce of the, the block as much as you can. I went ahead and cleaned a little bit of my piston, just a little bit. And then I took a vacuum with the hose and I sucked 
all the rest of the coolant out that's in the jackets as well as all the oil that was stuck in there the oil does end up inside of the studs so you got to make sure you clean inside the holes with an air compressor like this you just grab a towel you put the air in there and you start blowing it out until you don't see any oil residue come out of those holes you know that the holes are cleaned I'm gonna do it to the whole entire block just to make sure we have a proper cleaning surface. I don't want nothing to happen, nothing to go wrong. Any debris that was to end up in that can mess up your cooling and it can mess up your oil jackets as well. After you have everything clean, your surface looks good. It has to look really cleaned down below. As you can tell, there's not so much light here, but let me get you some light. See, see how clean it is inside the pores. It is all cleaned in there. You want to make sure that there's no oil, no coolant in there. Make sure there's no debris in there. Make sure you're not running a fan so it, debris doesn't get knocked into that because then you'll contaminate it. Make sure that there's no dust flying around you. Other than that, we're going to go ahead. We already cleaned off the whole entire block with brake part cleaner, which you can pick these up pretty much anywhere. It doesn't have to be O'Reilly's, but it can be anywhere. And then you have your head gasket I would definitely strongly recommend getting mountain tune head gasket they're actually way better for boost especially when you're adding more boost to the factor and then what we're going to be doing next is we have the APR head studs for this build and that's going to help with head lift especially when you're adding more boost to the to the source and if you're doing a bottom end, it would even be even better. But, it, you know, I know a lot of people don't have 10 grand to replace the whole entire block. I mean, if you are, then great. If you're not, then, well, you really don't need to remove it. Pretty much it's ready to be taken out of the, off of the transmission bell housing and it can be removed. But without said or done, we're going to go ahead and get the head gasket on. And we're going to start putting the studs in. The studs go in just hand tight when they bottom out. The top ends of the APR head studs are not meant to be torqued down. So as you can tell, they have a little divot in them. Those are not meant to be torqued down. That's just for removal and installation. So you can get it down all the way to the bottom of the block. We're gonna go ahead and get this done. He's over here cleaning the whole surface of the cylinder head, making sure that it's clean from all debris grease and anything even when you get them resurfaced when you get them brand new they put a coating on it to help it not get rusted which is a good idea when it is through shipping courses we're not in shipping courses anymore we're going to be installing it now and i will show you guys the next step after we go ahead and put the head gasket on and i start screwing in the, the studs we'll show you clips of me working here and there but we're trying to get as much done as we can tonight we'll be right back we're going to go ahead and put the head gasket on and start putting the studs in that process is pretty much done you just place your head gasket on first and go ahead and start threading down your apr head studs if you have the chaser i would definitely recommend chasing them before you put them in just like how they say do not apply torque to the head studs you just put them down until they hit the bottom and then we are almost done doing the head getting it all ready to be sorted out we're gonna have to rinse off the nut you got the washers that you have to also grease remove as well and it has to be both sides they say if you don't do this it can cause premature wear and you definitely don't want that because your head will not stay down you, you will run into problems Make sure that you get all the grease off from both sides of these when you're doing that you can go ahead and cover this back up now so that way no grease or debris will get in between the head gasket or get onto your piston rings or into the chambers or whatever the case may be keep that covered until you are ready to slap your head on all right guys now at this point we already went ahead and reassembled the new cylinder head so we got the coolant tube on there ready to go just missing one bolt that we had to take out last time and then we're going to go ahead and start bolting it down we cleaned all of the washers just like they directed and then we're going to set that on there put the washers in there and probably clean these girls here too as directed and we're going to go ahead and find the right size for it 
and then start torquing them down. What we're doing is we're taking the nuts, putting thread seal in them, instead of doing it on the studs because it's not as simple as you think it is. So we're just gonna add it to the threads of the nut and then I'm gonna go ahead and thread the nut into the bank. I'm doing it as the torque sequence. This way it makes it easier. I'm just putting them hand tight. Screw her down. What we are about to do is I have my torque wrench set for 25 pounds. The same route as what they're showing there. We're gonna start off with the first one which is right here in the middle. Don't over tighten them. Yep, exhaust middle. We're about to get ready to start torquing these down and it takes a 12 millimeter socket and it looks similar to looks similar to that. So pretty much match the bolt that goes in there or the nut rather. It's not a normal socket at all. And you're gonna start off in sequence. So you have to make sure that the first one is set for 25 pounds. 25 foot pounds and we're gonna go ahead and start torquing these girls down start from one 